Good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Internet Radio. I have myself, Alan James. And you have myself, Adam and the Ants. Adam and the Ants joined yeah. in there and the end. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Coming in with the music. A slip of the um, button. It's Sunday the 2nd of June 2013. Good evening everyone and thanks for tuning in to OIM. Before we get on, we'll go over to the uh, communication channel. Steve, take us from there. Yeah, communication channels, info at OYMIreland.com. Uh, for your emails, Jordan the Show or Jordan the Week. I should just get pre-recorded saying that because I say the same thing. I'm going to just mix it up a little. For your, for your emails, Jordan the Week or Jordan the Show. Uh, we also have the guest book. No, we don't. We have the chat box or the chat room on the website as well. We're also streaming on several different uh, stations this evening. Uh, but if you're no, ma- no matter where you're listening, if you want to join in the chat and pose questions to our guest or ourselves this evening, oymradio.com is the place to go. Uh, just click on the live chat button on your left hand side. You can log in there, and that'll let, get will get you into the room. There there will be a, a surcharge at the door when you get in. It's only a fiver, but sure it's worth it anyway. I'm only joking. Uh, and during the show, if you want to give us a shout on the landline, you can. Call us on 046-927-1212. Yeah, not sure who that was. I think Mary must be on holidays this week. But uh, yeah, 46 927 If you're ringing in, ringing in from outside Republic of Ireland, 00353 in front of that, Alan. I think that was a something. Was it? How are you, Sunday? How's it going? <laughs> You're looking well. well. We'll have to check it out, I think. Yeah. Okay, our guest on tonight is Mr. Dean Clifford. Dean is um, just busy for the few minutes, but we're going to be bringing him in in about 10 or 15 minutes. Mr. 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 Dean Clifford, there Ooh, you go. Mr. 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 Oh, but Dean. That's, hang on, Mr. Dean. Dean Clifford is a straw man. I shouldn't yeah, say that. You. Dean Clifford, lowercase. Oh, my God. I should get that <laughs> right, I tell you. Okay, um, Steve is going to tell us all about our funky seminar that we're going to be doing in a few weeks. Yes, time. there's going to be a funky seminar, putting the funk back into seminars. That's what we are doing. It's going to be a free seminar, as mentioned previously, in the Hedford Arms Hotel in Kells, in County Sunny. Sunny, beautiful downtown sunny County Mead. That's on Monday, the 17th of June, uh, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Limited seats are available. Uh, and we mentioned last week and the week before, we're not joking, it's kind of a small room. Uh, this is kind of dipping our toe in the water. So we didn't want to book the, uh, the O2 just yet. So uh, uh, seating will be limited, but there'll be plenty of parking. Uh, in the town of Kells on the evening. I think it's pay and display parking up to, I believe, 6 o'clock. I could be wrong. Uh, so, but the fact that we're going to, or it could be 7 o'clock, but we're going to be kicking off at 8 to uh, 10, so it would be no problem with the parking. There's also car parking available across the road from the hotel uh, in the church grounds. The guest for the, the, the seminar will be Mr. Walter Graham, or Walter Graham, not Mr., just Walter, Walter Graham. Uh, he's going to be talking about the dangers of wireless technology and related technology. Uh, for argument's sake, he's going to be discussing Wi-Fi, deck phones, so on and so forth. And it's going to be a great evening. And for anyone who will be there, you'll be, there's a, a free bumper sticker for everyone in the audience, should you so wish. And we'll have a little bucket at the door. Well, it's a free event, as mentioned. But there will be a little bucket at the door, or a big bucket, depending on, you know, how things go and if you want to make a little donation to to cover costs or you know whatever that would be absolutely fantastic so that's uh, the Hedford Arms Kells County Mead Monday 17th of June put that in the calendar and we look forward to seeing you all there brilliant stuff now we're hoping to try and stream the actual seminar over the internet as well over the OAM player now fingers crossed there's no promise to that we can do that because we're going to check out the internet access and speed there and see what we can do but fingers crossed if we can do that we'd um, hopefully be able to stream the the seminar so for people outside of Ireland or for people who can't get this to the seminar hopefully you'll still be able to tune in and hear it so that's the plan fingers crossed we get that right okay the other thing that's going on at the moment just a quick announcement Dr. Carol was in contact in the desert at Joshua Tree Retreat Center on the 9th and 11th of August 2013 a weekend of exploration into ancient aliens, human origins, UFO sightings and the need to know. Watch the media shower through the clear desert sky featuring George Norrie, Stephen Greer, Livestream, Graham Hancock, Jim Mars and more. For more information visit contactinthedesert.net and Dr. Carol Rosen is going to be hosting that. 
Steve? Yeah, that's going to be the one to one to watch out for. Uh, I don't think we're going to be there ourselves. Not not in person, anyway. But uh, it'll it'll be an interesting one, I, I suspect. But, yeah, there's a big march. There was a big march, sorry, last Saturday regarding the GMO and Monsanto. And our state broadcaster, Radio Television Air and RTE, they didn't know anything about it. If that's the case, then they should just pack up, close down, because they're not doing their job. They're not reporting the news. And I do believe they were also questioned. They were sent an email, RTE were sent an email during the week, uh, from, uh, I, I, do, I think this, this is up on Facebook, uh, the, a copy of the reply. They were, they were asked, were they going to be covering the, the Bilderberg That's what meeting I said. as well? Yeah. And they reported, that they sent an email back to the chap who, who wrote into them, basically said, no, they, they didn't really know anything about that either. And sure, you know, it's not really news. Wow. <laughs> Don't you just love your state broadcaster, yeah. RTE? Yeah. <coughs> and they're doing a news. fantastic job, aren't they? Telling us nothing. Oh, drivel. Obviously, that's a lot of drivel they actually report on. Yeah, why would they want to show something like that? You know, it just, I mean, people might watch it and learn something. Let's just put on a repeat or maybe put on some Carnation Street or East Enders or some other drivel. Oh, what's that other crappy TV series they had? The uh, or- <laughs> RTE, some. Yeah. A crappy RTE show. Mm. Yeah, like yeah. so. There's so many out there. Oh, Fair City. Oh, it? yeah, God. Fair City. God, I'd, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Enough said. Okay, now we've reached our target for the digital recorder. So thank you to everyone that donated towards that. Um, we're going to put that on the list to get in. We'll probably do that after the seminar. Now, last week I did mention about clicking on the ads on the website, but we realised after the show that we are actually haven't running a new website and we don't have the ads on it. So we're going to do that during the week and get that sorted. But we do have a donate button on the actual site at the moment. So if it's a one euro, two euro, three euro, wherever you can afford, by all means, um, it'd be great if you can donate and be a big help to us. Just click on the donate button, that'd be fantastic. But uh, how's your week, Steve? Well, the fact that we've had we've uh, had a lot of sunshine this week, I've I've taken to the garden. I've got the green thumbs or the green fingers. I've been out doing a little bit of gardening and and soaking up those chemtrails. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, when you were coming over, I didn't know if you're going to hug me or smack me. I don't know. But um, yeah, I was I was out in the garden, you know, pottering about, doing a bit and cleaning up. And uh, well, the fact that the, as I mentioned to you during the week, the grass is green. I think we did comment a couple of weeks back that the grass was kind of a weird shade of beigey green. It was it was kind of strange looking. It didn't look like real grass at all. I actually thought it was something to do with chemtrails, yeah, having some some effect on the uh, the foliage. But uh, no, the grass is green, so it's starting to grow uh, like wildfire. So I've been doing that. However, that's uh, that's you know one one side of my life. On the other side, there is uh, some links that I stuck up earlier on. Uh, I actually took a, a little break from the garden and I came in and was kind of just having a, a bit of a browse through the internet and I've seen a couple of links now. One was from a good friend of ours here, Thomas Sheridan and it's up at the very, very top of the chat box there. I think it's uh, three minutes past three this afternoon I stuck that up. Uh, watched it. It's a, it's a very good little introduction to kind of waking your friends up uh, which is kind of, you know, it, it can be a tough... It can be a tough thing, depending on you know who your friends are. But Thomas Sheridan kind of gives he gives some good information on how to do it, and he actually starts it by telling a story. And um, I won't ruin it on anyone, but it's you know for the first couple of minutes of the story, even I was I could feel he, I could see him shaking when he was telling the story. You know, it, it was it was obviously bringing back some some uh, traumatic experience or memories. But uh, he he goes on and he he goes through it, and it's it's a, a a good outcome at the end, so if anyone hasn't seen the video there with, with uh, Thomas Sheridan, go and check it out. It is definitely worth the watch. And the other one that I stuck up as well is from another chap who, I have to click this here to get his name. His name is Larkin Rose. I think his his wife done one there. I think it's Tessa Rose. She done one a couple of weeks back. I think we, we did stick it up on the chat. It was in relation to the uh, anarchic society. Or an, an, an anarchist based government, or whatever you want to call it. But uh, Larkin Rose has one up called The Tiny Dot. Now, if anyone hasn't seen the video, The Tiny Dot, this is Larkin's response. He has The Tiny Dot explained. 
and it's also a fantastic little video. It really sums it up because it, basically what I got out of it was that we are the majority, we are the mass, and we're controlled by laws and acts and statutes and all, all this sort of carry on. And when he explains it, he says there is a tiny dot, and the tiny dot is the government. And they basically control the, uh, billions of people with laws. We're afraid to tackle the government, and we, we'll spend it, we'll waste our time, he says, trying to get the government to change the law, you know, to, to make it maybe have it more fair or something. But we're wasting our time, he says, we should just completely turn our back on, on this government. Obviously, as I said to Alan earlier, he, Larkin Rose puts it a lot better than I could ever imagine, you know, of doing. But it's definitely worth the watch. That's up there at the top of the chat box as well. And I would urge anyone to have a have a look at that after the, after the show. Or during the show. It's, you know, it's entirely up to yourself. It's a free for all here. Um, other than that now, you know, it's just, you know, boring all week. Really? I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> Well, you all, you always have a more exciting week than mine. So, well, how, a, how was your week? Of a little bit more time than you do during the week. Now, for people who you probably have seen this, but for people who haven't seen it, and obviously we're going to be bringing Dean on now after I read this um, in a couple of minutes. But I think this is very, very important, and it sets a precedent over here in Ireland. And I'm just going to read out what I kind of cut and paste from Facebook, and it says, "Urgent: the biggest crack in the armor of the of." of Bank of Ireland, of the banks of in Ireland. Congratulations to Marion Freeman, who made Irish legal history in the High Court today and marks the first recognition of any Irish court in reference to securitisation. Her tenacity, and perseverance and dedication will be enjoyed by thousands of families throughout the country and beyond in time. Because of Merriam, securitisation and its detrimental effect to banks will be litigated for many years to come. Those of you who don't understand the significance of today's achievement, please read the first paragraph of the Central Bank of Ireland's Code of Practice to banks operating in Ireland. And it says here, Central Bank of Ireland Code of Practice of the Transfer of Mortgages. Now, this is for everybody who has a mortgage and the securitization, we talk about the bank selling your mortgage on. Okay, And if you ask them for the original agreement, um, chances are they won't have it. So it says here, a loan secured by the mortgage of residential property may not be transferred without the written consent of the borrower. So basically a bank, a bank cannot sell on your agreement on your mortgage without your permission. When seeking consent from either an existing or a new borrower, the lender must provide a statement containing sufficient information to enable the borrower to make an informed decision. This statement, which must be cleared in advance with the Central Bank of Ireland, must include a clear explanation of the implications of a transfer, including the borrower's future membership status, where the lender is a building society, and how the transfer might affect the borrower. Merriam, on behalf of one who knows your sacrifice, I thank you, and says please post. So they're saying that according to the Central Bank of Ireland rules, Banks in Ireland cannot sell on your mortgage without asking your permission and giving you um, time, consideration to think about it and giving you the information to see what's involved and who will benefit. Now, that means that the banks are technically committing fraud because they're selling something that doesn't belong to them without your permission. So, well, well it doesn't really belong to them. So, it's fraud anyway. I'm sure Dean will be able to go into more detail over securitization. Yes, the chat teacher, back. Teacher, yes. teacher, teacher, teacher. Uh, do you remember the video we watched a couple of weeks back with White Rabbit? Yeah. Now, didn't he say that when he was signing some documentation uh, for, I, I do believe it was, a, it was bank documentation. It may have been in connection with a mortgage. I can't rightly remember. But he did say that there was a page or a paragraph or there was something in there where when he signed it, it actually gave the bank power of attorney. So, therefore, they could do pretty much whatever they wanted on his behalf without contacting him. Now, I mean, I, I see what, what's, what's been You're talking here. about the power of attorney. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm just wondering. I, I see what's written here, and it's, it is, as you, as you rightly said, it's groundbreaking stuff. It's history in the making is what it is. But, how far will we get? Is there anything in, when you sign a mortgage, you know, you, when you 
when they, the bank make the X and you sign your name, is there anything in there? Because no one ever reads it. Who well, reads all that crap? Is there anything in there that's, you know, where we may be giving them power of attorney to do whatever they want? Yeah, but at the end of the day, surely if you sign... See, this is the thing. It's an agreement. It's not a contract. And normally with contracts, you have to have full transparency. And because it's an agreement, when you sign it, they then turn it into a promissory note and sell it. But I know a man that might be able to help us on this. Well, let's get him on. So. Let's get him on. So, let's good evening, on. Dean. How are you doing? Hello. You there? Yes. Dean. Dean. Hello. Are you there? Hello, I'm here. Oh yes, there you go. <laughs> there you go. We lost okay, you. Somebody, I, I think somebody had me muted still. Okay, no problem. We're, we're up and running there. Good evening, Dean. How are you doing? Very good. Yourself? Not too well, bad. It'd be, uh, it'd be just after good morning for me. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, because you're, you're over in Canada, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Canada, we, we span half the globe, so depending on where, on where in Canada, that, that could be a lot of places. So, yeah. No worries. Well, Dean, we've had you on the show before, so there's no point going over all ground. But before we get into talking about um, securitization and all that kind of stuff, give us an update on what you've been up to since the last time you were on the show. I can't even remember how long it's been since I was on the show, to be honest with you. But uh, if it's been any more than anything more than a week, which it has, it's probably been a year or more. Uh, I, I can't believe the momentum and the energy in, I, I guess, what we call the law movement. I really don't know what people want to call it. They keep calling it a movement. It's really not. It's just a global awakening of people realizing we have rights. And uh, the Helsinki syndrome is wearing off. This mass, mass cognitive dissonance that's going on where people just don't even realize they're being enslaved, and I have a story, an update, even just for today on that. Uh, but I just can't believe the, the momentum now, with the, all around the world, too. People are waking up, and uh, the, the exposure we're getting now, and then even recently, just the last couple of days here in Canada, uh, I was on the local news twice in two days with the same station, um, and they actually broadcast a, a, a few minutes segment uh, in a positive light, finally where they weren't trying to make us out to be gun-toting, uh, insane individuals trying to kill the government, and uh, they're really starting to, to, to see that, well, yeah, may, maybe these guys are on to something. Yeah, well, I totally agree with you. I'm tuning into Russia today quite a lot these days, just watching the news, and even this morning, all you see is uprisings in Turkey, in Spain, in Portugal, in Germany, and people saying, enough is enough. You know, yeah. and it's it's great to see. Unfortunately, you know, you don't want anybody hurt for obvious reasons. But so many countries, I mean, the world has never been in a situation like this on a global scale before. And so there's definitely something w- awakening. There's definitely something going on in a positive way that people are just beginning. I mean, I was just down with family today, visiting family. And, you know, we were actually, you know, sitting around the table having a cup of tea. And my family were talking about, you know, things that are going on about, you know, the banks and the property charge and the water. T- you know, I mean, even, and my family are kind of pretty reserved uh, at the best of times, but they were kind of, you know, talking about it and, you know, one or two stages, you know, being angry about what the government are doing and, and everything else. And if that's kind of magnified, you know, or duplicated around the families in Ireland or around the globe, then that's fantastic to, to see, you know. Oh, I completely agree. And you know what? Even the, even this morning, like, uh, this is a prime example of how, uh, of, I mean, Canadians and Canada in general, people like to really believe and we really push this idea that Canada is such a free country and we should be so proud of where we live. And we're so free here. Um, this morning, I just got off the phone with my grandparents about, uh, about an hour ago, and they happened to see the, t- the CTV specials on the news there on Thursday and Friday last week. And my grandparents are, are not happy about this at all, uh, because they are terrified. Terrified that I'm going to get black bagged, or they're just going to come and take me and, and, and kill me, or throw me in jail and never let me out, or something really bad is going to happen, or the police are even going to come and start harassing, intimidating them. And I'm listening to this, and, I'm, and, and of course, my grandparents, from uh, being from Belfast, they lived through the war, they lived through the Blitz, they lived through all the stuff that was happening in Ireland back in the day before they moved to Canada, uh, obviously, uh, many, many years ago. And I'm thinking to myself, does she even understand 
that she's actually terrified of her own government and believes that she lives in a free country better than what Ireland was 60 years ago. Mm. They're terrified that I'm going to get kidnapped and killed by the government, but at the same time they believe we live in a free country and I should just 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 get along and just just go with the flow and obey the rules. Yeah, I know. We uh, I think the the our, our parents and maybe our grandparents do probably feel like that a lot of the time. Um, just get on. But we were we were talking about that on the show. We just want to make a, a quick statement here, by the way, just on a chat facility. I'm aware that uh, one of the uh, Crown Copyright said that RT uh, Russia Today have their own agenda. I'm well aware of that. But if I have a choice between watching Russia Today and BBC, I know I'll be watching Russia Today because I'll get more, uh, much better uh, point of view rather than from the BBC and RTE. Um, but sorry, just uh, bouncing around there, uh, Dean. I agree with you. We were talking about this. What we, we, we kind of put, we f- did a bit of research and found out that People who don't want to wake up and don't want change or don't want to learn anything new are called neophobic. So, and we were talking about this on the show because what happened was we were talking about the singer Lauren Hill from the band The Fugees. And they are trying to diagnose her with oppositional depression, upper, uh, upper, oppositional defiant disorder. Isn't there something like that? Oppositional Defiant Disorder, yeah, ODD, ODD. Yeah, ODD. yeah this, and this, she's gone to she's gone to a re-education facility, has she not? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, to try and um, you know change change her ways. So the opposite to the ODD was being neophobic. So you can go and Google that or uh, Wikipedia and have a look at what neophobic means. But basically, not opening your mind and not want to learn anything new and just you know the I'm okay Jack attitude. Yeah, I, I had a, an explanation for that recently. I was trying to explain to somebody why people are unable to accept a lot of the concepts that we're bringing forward. And especially for older people, it, it's it's not that they're set in their ways. For instance, say somebody like my father, who's 65 and retired, paid taxes his entire life, did everything he's told his entire life. For him to accept what I'm trying to tell him, he would have to look in the mirror and look back over his life and realize that he was a slave and he was duped. And he didn't have to pay taxes. He didn't have to do all this stuff. And that makes people appear very foolish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you would rather defend what you've done over the last 60 years of your life to, to to, to, to not appear a fool. In other people's eyes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that's a pride thing, and that that's it's horrible. But I think that's actually what's going on here is people uh, people have so much pride, and they believe they're so proud to do their part to chip into the country, which which is not where your money goes. Obviously, we know that. Um, but they don't want to appear like fools for having been duped their entire life. That's right. They don't want to admit it. We did a talk down in Waterford there. Well, what thing was last year, and we talked about the whole psychology of the waking up process. And, you know, they've been conditioned all this time, over, you know, 60 years of conditioning. So they don't want to turn around and go, wow, I've been so kind of stupid that I've been been sucking this stuff in and, you know, I've been agreeing with it. And that's going to make me look stupid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deny it. I'm going to say, no, you're, you're talking, you're mad, you know, you're a lunatic. Because to turn around and for them to admit that means that they have been duped. And, yeah. and you know, and it, they don't. A lot of people don't have the, comp- the confidence to come along and and to admit that to say, you know, you know what, you're right. I have been duped. I can now see what's going on. And you want to have a bit of confidence, you know, um, um, in, in yourself to be able to to do that, you know. Yep. And uh, actually, for for people out there that are maybe just just listening to this kind of stuff and the still fence sitting and not really sure what they want to do because they, they you know they're, they're they're living in a bit of fear right now all i can tell you is when you start down this road and you start to awaken man i don't do drugs i've never smoked pot in my life i don't do any form of drugs i'm irish i like the odd drink now and then not very much anymore though uh barely ever but if you ever want to rush and you want just a euphoric feeling where your whole body starts to vibrate and you get warm all over Start to realize that you're alive. Start let, let the slavery start to slip away. Start thinking about what you are and 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 freedom. And and you get these epiphanies that wash over you when you realize that how free you are and how what you're capable of. It's I, I'm sorry, I've never done drugs. I can't compare it. But I got to tell you, there's no way any drug compares with the euphoric feeling that washes over you when you start to wake up and be alive finally for the first time. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think the more people are looking into this and opening their mind, even at different levels, it doesn't have to be on the big scale, but even if they're not happy with the you know the mortgage or the property t- charge or anything you know like licenses and stuff like that if that's enough to keep them to waken waken them up to go and look for more information and challenge the system on that we're quite happy with that you don't have to know the bigger picture you just need to know that the system you're in at the moment is being designed to make us uh, slaves and to give the power to the 1% and the money to the 1% Oh, there's no question, and uh, I, I, I think that the abuses have become so bad now, it's so obvious, um, people don't even believe them, they don't believe the news anymore, most people just don't believe the mainstream news, and people are leaving in droves to, to watch things like Alex Jones, which is unfortunately mostly fear-mongering, but now there's starting to be a new resource out there, people like us and yourselves that are coming forward, and we're, we're offering solutions, it's not fear-based, it's kind of like, well... But that's great. Now we know what's going on. Let's fix this mess. Let's do something. Yeah, definitely. We, we've been saying it now. The last couple of weeks we've been saying to people, look, why don't people go off and they can set up their own radio show. We're more than happy to Skype with them, to give them a hand, point them in the right direction. And start setting up their own radio shows. Get your voice out there. Let it be heard. Or, or approach radio shows that offer um, their own stream. They, can, they might be able to just use Skype and connect in. And somebody will produce your show for you. Like, you know, MSI has a great range of um, uh, DJs, great range of radio hosts on MSI Radio. I know Synchronicity.com is also looking to do the same thing. So you don't, maybe you won't need, you know, certain things to take, from a techn- technological point of view. You might just want to use Skype and, and Skype in. But whatever way you do it, get your voice heard. I'm sure a lot of people out there have a lot to say about what's going on. So the more radio stations we have, the more people telling people what's going on, it'll just grow. As Walter Graham says, he has a great analogy. You know, when you drop um, a stone in a pond, you get ripples. It's cause and effect. Yeah, and I think that one thing, uh, it, it, it's funny because uh, uh, in the news, they really try to portray us as like violent people who want to overthrow governments or we're terrorists and we're, 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 doing, we're, we're, we're physically harming people or or all these ridiculous things that I think people are starting to wake up and realize, well, no, that doesn't really look all that true. And I think that's the best part about that the, the CTV interview we just had here the other day where they came to my house and they were filming me watering my plants and talking about just peaceful things. It's like, yeah, like I really look like a terrorist. Eh? Here I am watering my acorns where I'm gr- growing uh, oak trees and stuff like that. Like, And we were we were mocking the existing news system. And they agreed with me. They're like, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's just pathetic what's going on. And in fact, even recently, I had to, I just post random things on Facebook recently here. Uh, unfortunately, we're still using it because you get high traffic there, but uh, to get the word out. And I had a little divestment thir- 2013 thing there. I just woke up and was having a tea one morning and threw it out there just to say, look, people, we don't need to be protesting. Nobody take to the streets. You don't need to go out and do anything violent. You don't need to be any of the things that they're trying to claim that we are. Just stay home and vote with your dollar and just defund the system. Divest from it. Take your money out of it. Stop buying luxury items and crap you don't need. Stop buying stuff made in China. Stop buying heavily taxed items. Stop buying cigarettes and just take away their tax base. That's yes. nonviolent and all you're doing is you're, 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 uh, defunding them. You're taking away their revenue to be able to fund all the bad things that they're doing against you. And I, I specifically told people, I, uh, and this is uh, this is where I'm going with this story, I specifically told people, especially Monsanto, I said, it's stupid that people are protesting against Monsanto in the United States. All they have to do is take away the market. Stop buying GMOs. Find people that are growing organically. Go and find farmers. Go right to source and find these products. And, avo- and don't go to the grocery stores anymore. And as soon as you start doing that, the grocery stores are going to stop carrying those items or the farmers that are buying Monsanto seeds will stop because it's going to become non-profitable because nobody wants to buy that crap. Within a week of me posting that, I get this news story two days ago that basically Monsanto has stopped lobbying in Europe because nobody wants to buy the stuff, which means there's no market for it. Mm -hmm. I started laughing. I said, well, fuck, there you go. 
Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, what we all say to people as well is try and barter as much as you can. I know this week I've been doing a little bit of bartering um, over a few things and it's great where no money changes hands and you do, you know, something for someone and they do something for you. And it's it's great because, you know, it's um, it's out of the system. You know, because that's what we're going to... If things go really bad, the way, you know, the economy is going to... They're apparently predicting, especially with what's going on with Syria and Iran. Basically, if, if we had John Irwin on the show, he's a, a super soldier, and he was telling us what they're planning to do, what they possibly will be planning to do in the Middle East with Syria. And if that happens, then if they, they close down the Straits of Hamas, then that means all the stuff coming over from China and all that stuff is going to be closed... It won't come. It'll be closed down. Um, so we need to be looking at, at being self-sufficient as much as we can and try and get back to community as much as we can. Now, sometimes that can be more easy to say and harder to do. But you probably know key people in your area who might be able to help out. It doesn't have to be everybody, but key people. Now, I am working on a time banking system with a program at the moment, which we hope to try and get finished as soon as we can but it's just taking a bit of time because obviously we're developing a new system and it uh, unfortunately won't be free there'll be a little charge to it because unfortunately the programmer has to get paid but what we do, it'll be only a small fee but what we hope we'll do is that we'll have it in a way that people will be able to purchase it download it and then set up their own time banking system in the local community and just get people on board and set up their own system that's the plan of attack so we're um, you know I'll, I'll obviously keep our listeners posted on what's happening with that but that's one way to but even without the time banking system just get to know certain people and start you know doing some deals Community networking, absolutely. And uh, it, there's nothing wrong with competing forms of currency uh, if people don't want to use the existing money system. But one thing I'm teaching people, and this is where I differ from a lot of people, and I almost exclusively turn out to be correct on this stuff because I understand the system very well, we don't have to be scared of using do- the dollars, the fiat currency uh that There's no law attached to that. I will argue that to the death, and everybody, oh, it's their money, it's their money. No, it's not their money. It's our money because it's drawn on our full faith and credit. We're the principals. We are what backs that money. That makes it our money, not theirs. Mm. This system isn't theirs. It's ours. Why? Because we are the principals. Everything comes back to us, not to them. They're the middleman making all the money in the middle. That's what we have to cut out. Cut out the middleman. They're just trying to make money off of every little transaction that we do. That's all that's going on here. It's not their money that's enslaving us, right? It's our ignorance that's enslaving us. But in the end, when we go back to the law of the land and we go back to, back to man, woman, and, and not the legal person, we are the principals. We own everything. Everything is on loan to them. Yeah. We own it though. It's mm. my car. I can take it back. It's my house. I can take it back. They're just the tenants. Yeah. We are the principal, we are the landowners, we are the landlords, we are the ones in a position to be granting, and that means that we are in a position of power and authority, and they know it, and they know that once we figure that out, they're done. The mm. game is up, and that's what's happening now. Yeah. Now, is there any of the news that you've heard through the grapevine, any of the good news, because we, we do try and focus on the positive stuff as well. Now, at the end of the show, we normally end on that, but if there's any of the good news that you have or anything that you've come across, by all means, share it with us. That'd be great. Um, good news? Jeez, why? I mean, I don't know, other than the fact that people are terrified of what's going on right now and they're scrambling. Um, well, what do you there's think? There's a lot. Sorry, Sorry go ahead. I was just going to say, what do you think of that statement then? Um, Obviously, what I read out earlier regarding the securitization over here in Ireland, that there's a crack in the armour in the banks of Ireland because of um, congratulations to the woman who won the court case. Now, that apparently court case, as far as I know, don't quote me on it, is going to go to trial now because the judge agreed with um, Miriam Freeman. And the banks, I mean, this case is apparently was so important that the CEO of Bank of Scotland, Ireland, flew over for the court case. That's how serious it was. So the the banks, apparently, what I've heard through the grapevine, were dumbfounded because they just thought, well, we're going to win. And they didn't, which means that they can now bring this case to trial. So, Well, 
there could be a couple different explanations for that. Uh, I mean, uh, if you want to call it revolution, sure, but uh, it, it's in the air. Uh, we know it's we know it's going to happen. Uh, they know it's going to happen. I was just talking about that with uh, somebody this morning there because uh, some judges in the United States and whatnot and uh, other things are starting to kind of come over and are starting to be more on our side. And I started laughing at it and saying, yeah, you know what? They probably don't want to wind up at the end of six feet of rope because they know what's they know what's coming down. So they're starting to switch sides, hoping that uh, hoping that the fallout won't be as bad. Maybe if they just switch sides now, yeah, that's probably what's going on uh, more so than it, more. We've been right for de- for a decade. We've been right for 15 years. Why are they just starting now to say, oh, yeah, you're right. We know we're right. It's because enough of us finally got together. We're starting to turn the tide of knowledge. And they're scared. They are very scared. Their pensions are at stake. Their lives are at stake. What, what happened the last time a revolution came to the United States? Definitely. And I think, you know, one of the things I will say is over here in Ireland, and probably for other countries as well, I don't want any TD. I'd like to see all TDs, regardless of whether they're in the government or they're ex-TDs on a pension, brought to book for what happened. No excuse. A crime is a crime is a crime. Whether you are in government or not, if you are in government and that there's something happened, you are being held responsible. And you will be brought to court and, and, you know, or jailed or fined, whatever the case may be. But I I think that should be done, that we should get to the stage when we are going through the TDs one by one and go, right, he was in power in this government at the time when that happened and nothing was said, so we're going to sort him out. And I I believe, now I know people are going to say, that might sound like a bit of a witch hunt. Well, I'm sorry, but a crime is a crime is a crime. If If you look at the likes of Jimmy Savile, who did this abuse going back to the 60s and 70s, it didn't, it didn't matter how long ago it happened. It still happened, and it was a crime. So, no excuse from the TDs. Lock them up. Find out what they did, what they were involved in, why they didn't say anything, and basically, you know, throw away the key. Yeah, ju- judges and, and banks especially, obviously, and politicians, all the people in the government, all the people at the top, they all know that all of this is fraud. They all know that. There's... There's case law going back to the 1980s here in, uh, in the United States, in North Dakota, right just south of me here, where there was a judge that uh, was retiring. And he finally just came right out and said it. And he awarded a couple down in, uh, I think, uh, North Dakota there, a farming, a farming uh, family uh, that had taken a, uh, the bank to court there over their mortgage, and put right in his decision that there is no such thing as a non-fraudulent mortgage. Since the beginning of time, every mortgage ever created has been fraud on its face. That's incredible. And this was this was this was like a Supreme Court uh, decision in, in that in that particular state down in the United States. It could be used as case, case law. Well, they killed that guy. That judge wound up dead weeks after that, yeah. and that case law disappeared. It was gone. It yeah. got saved and passed around a little bit, but they know exactly what's going on. Which it's not like this is a revelation of some kind. They just can't keep the lid on it anymore. That's all that's going on. I could explain to you how a mortgage is fraud. It, it's not hard. It's usually just not the argument I want people to make because I don't want they. I don't want them painting the law movement. It's just a bunch of people that want to get out of their mortgages. But this I'm, is about our rights. This is about our liberties. Not getting a house for free. But be, as you said, every mortgage was fraud anyway because they're using. Well, if you want to call, I mean, fractional reserve banking. When they give you two hundred thousand of money that doesn't exist based on fractional reserve, then you know when people turn around to you and say, "Oh well, you have to pay your debts." Yeah, I will pay my debts if it was a real debt and not just well, fictitious money that was produced out of thin air. Well, the money exists, and here's the problem. Remember I said where the, where the government uh, is really just the middleman here because we're the principals? Mm. I've explained this before. Uh, I don't think many people picked up on it. I'll explain it again. Mortgages are the same thing. The bank is just a middleman. The bank is a middleman between you and you. You are the principal of the mortgage. And then you are also the, the you're you're the one receiving the funds. You're the, you're the tenant. You're the loanee. So you're the one loaning the money, and then you're the one being loaned the money. And the bank is the middleman making it happen because they're licensed to convert those securities into cash. So it, it's you. You're the only one. You're the one of importance in this contract anyway. So they're just basically being a collecting a collection agent for you. So they know you're the principal when they need you to be the principal. Mm. 
Definitely. And then after that, they don't want you to know that you're the one that funded the loan because they'd have to return all the money to you after you paid it. Mm. It's a great, uh, it's a great Ponzi scheme, you know, really, really is. And I'm going to pass over to Steve because we have questions coming in. So, Steve, take it away there. Okie dokie, uh, good information. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, comments going on on uh, all the, the chat rooms uh, in, in connection with, with everything that that you are having a, having a discussion about. There, Tahiti Waves is wondering: Would Dean recommend us? Start by claiming our BC as a first step. I'm guessing BC is birth certificate. And if so, how do we start? Yeah, actually, I just spoke with a friend of mine, uh, Lee, in, uh, in the United Kingdom there two days ago uh, with regards to this, because I think he actually ended up taking this to, to, to court uh, because he claimed the BC. I'm, I'm thinking he might have gone to the wrong jurisdiction to claim it or whatnot, but uh, it, it is yours. There's no question. You're the principal behind all of that. That's why when you die, that, that kind of goes with you. The only thing that gives it value is you. You're backing it. That's what gives it value. It's a bond. Um I've, I've spoken to people about the live birth record in the past. Um, the only real reason you want that is just to prove that you were actually born there, um, because really that that's what that's what all your rights are attached to. Um, it is is the fact that where you were born, your your claim to your share of the resources, uh, and, and everything that backs the the birth certificate, because that's what created the birth certificate. Again, I've heard it a lot of people. Uh, still, even on my own forum, people are still arguing and saying, no, we don't own the birth certificate, it's theirs. And I differ with everybody on this, and I'm going to say, once again, unequivocally, bullshit. We own it all. They're a middleman. On one, The problem is that we've got all these different capacities that we've created for ourselves within government by using the birth certificate. We've gone and got all this government ID. In that capacity, we have no claim to the birth certificate because we're just another public servant. That's what they view us as. We have to go back to make sure that we're claiming as the proper party. Same man, different capacity. And people have a big, a, a, a lot of problems understanding this concept. And it's no different than being an employee at two different corporations, right? I could work for both Coke and Pepsi, but I can't work for both at the same time. And there's different policies and different rules that apply to each capacity. That's all that's going on here. There's different rules, different rights, and different privileges that apply to different capacities. And when you go right back to being the person that initiated all this, the principal, then you are the highest authority, period, with regards to your person. Your person is yours. It is property. It is real estate. It is um, treated as such. Land titles. Your, your legal person is is actually real estate. It's property. It's a thing. And you own it. But you have leased it out to somebody. You rented it to the government. So it's no different than you renting a house. If you want to start considering your legal person to be a house, you rented it to them. They're the SESTA KV. They're the tenant. They're the ones that have beneficial use of the thing now. The problem is, you didn't know they have to pay you for this. No different than anybody would have to pay rent. Hmm. And that's where we, that's where our power comes in, because this irrevocable trust that they created and tricked us into, when we figure out that we own it and they have to pay us for its use, and there is no established contract, we can go back and demand just about anything we want, or they have to stop using it. What that's... You- where our power comes from. Dean, what do you think of, uh, while we're on the subject, what do you think of the OPPT? Um, well, I normally don't comment on, on other people's things uh, or movements or beliefs or things that they got going on, but uh, a good deal of the concepts are, are really flawed. Um, for instance, uh, if you guys started a, a business over there in the U.K., if you you and your friend there just uh, just went out just registered uh, or created uh, your own little private corporation for doing business over here on the other side of the pond in Canada, I have nothing to do with with your business. Can I just unilaterally declare that your corporation doesn't exist? Hmm. No, it's it's idiocy. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. Not only that. Uh, it just, don't even get me started on how many flawed concepts there are with regards to it. Uh, 
some of the stuff is correct. Uh, they've had some successes, probably because a few of the documents they're sending out ask the right questions. But for the most part, most of it is very flawed, and I don't, I don't believe it at all, actually. Um, and the other interesting thing is I've noticed there's a few movements now that have popped up that have had lawyers or allegedly former lawyers heading the organization, and that's what OPPT is. Yeah. It seems to me like the Law Society realizes that we're waking up and they're losing their monopoly. Yeah. They're dying. And so now they're having all these lawyers allegedly walk away from their, their, their law license. Oh no, I rescinded it. I sent it back. No, that's for life. When you, when you give your pledge, that's for life in the law society. That is a lifetime thing. You cannot just rescind it. Okay. Mm. Um, and, but why are all these former lawyers all of a sudden now trying to be, uh, trying to be the heads of, of movements? And it seems they're either trying to redirect them or they're trying to take them over so they can maintain some control, some level of control. Well, it's, a, it's probably controlled opposition anyway um, from, exactly from the lawyers. It. We had uh, Tommy Pepperman on who actually agreed with you on the old PPT. Um, and um, I had my own kind of reasons as well why I wasn't too kind of happy about it. But um, not to worry, we'll go over to the questions. But just, uh, just to remind you then um, that uh, we're actually in uh, Ireland uh, not in the UK, so um, <laughs> just to, oh yes, 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 yes. Well, yeah, we consider all of that over there. <gasps> God, that's <laughs> blasphemy. That is. Oh, right, not you guys, you guys are so small. I could actually cross three different European uh, uh, nations just driving to the local uh, l- largest city that I have to go to to get groceries. So we we just yeah we tend to group you guys in. We really shouldn't do that a whole lot because I think all of Europe can fit inside the one province I live in alone. But. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of saying like oh you're Canadian oh you you're the same as American then, you know and and, yeah. and I know that Canadians are very kind of more European than American. You know you're more with it. Than the oh, we, we associate with Europe actually more than we do with the United States, yeah. to be honest with you as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's a bad habit that i got to get out of. That's uh, my public indoctrination in, in, the, uh, in the education system. You'll have to excuse me for that. That's okay. We'll send the boys around to educate you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Look, we're all just people living on a planet. <laughs> of course End we are. Story. Okay. Yeah, I think it's also because most, uh, most people kind of forget about that whole southern part of Ireland that makes up almost the entirety of Ireland that has nothing to do with the UK. And, yeah. uh, the, the, the four counties in the north there, or whatever they are, that, uh, that, that are, that are actually part of, uh, the, the United Kingdom. So there's, a lot of people don't even know that there is that differentiation. So when I usually speak about it, instead of getting into that with them, I just kind of tend to group everything together. Mm. No worries. We pass mm. over to Steve. Steve, can you got more questions? Steve? I do have some more questions. Before I continue, commonly known as Mark, uh, say hi to Dean from me. So I've done that. So that's uh, that's that's done. Uh, Hello back. What? Hello back. Oh, okay. Hello are. back. Hello back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Rhino, uh, Dean. I have a question for you regarding perspective. If they are scared and they are our ad- adversaries, what can we predict they will do with us? That's from a Rhino. Um, I made a few predictions on this about a year ago, and I said one of two different things are probably going to happen. Number one is they, they would risk um, they risk an, an all-out loss of power uh, by, through an actual worldwide revolution. Um, which which is entirely possible and might happen anyways, where they, they're exposed for all time, they lose all power, we tear this whole system down in the process. Uh, uh, untold amount of people are probably going to die in such kind of a revolution, uh, which I really don't want to see happen, but it's almost like some elements within their group want that to happen, and they think that they're going to be able to ride this out, which prob- which I don't think is the case. The other uh, scenario I see happening, which is one that they historic- historically take, is that when they start to lose control like this, they just kind of disappear for a while for a couple of generations into the shadows, and they just kind of pull back the the, the attempted power grabs, and they, they make us think that they've gone, oh, look, they've gone away. Oh, our freedoms are, re- are restored. Oh, judges are starting to realize that we are starting to remember that we have rights. Oh, the government's starting to agree with us now, and they're, oh, they're, they're going to scale back some legislation and start to recognize our rights. Uh, to lull us into a belief that, 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 that things have reversed or that they are reversing. I think that's what's going to be more likely is that they will backpedal 
so that we gain some confidence and we think that we've won and they disappear for a generation or two and then they go after our kids or our grandkids. Yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's when we start to see that happening, politicians backpedaling or the courts starting to side with us, I think we should be even more wary and vigilant because that's when we should be even more worried because they're just scheming behind the scenes even harder and they're just going to come back when they feel confident again that we've let our defenses down and we're happy with our football and, and beer again. Yeah, I think we have to be very careful of this controlled opposition because just when we think, oh, you know, we can relax a bit, you know, things are going really well, that could be, um, you know, a false positive. So I think we have to be on our guard and keep pushing. I mean, there's so many different predictions, if you want to call them, or where people have no opinion on what feel they feel is going to happen. And we hear quite a lot, obviously, being on OAM. But we keep an open mind to it, and we just kind of keep pushing. That's the main thing. I think we are on a seesaw, and I think we are definitely on the cusp of changing the balance of what's going on. We just need to keep pushing, and I think if we keep on pushing and keep, you know, keep things on the straight and narrow and don't divert too much, I think we have a good chance of of toppling the uh, PTB. Yeah, I, I think we're actually, uh, I think we actually passed the cusp. Uh, the, the Rubicon has been crossed. Uh, I believe that uh, a couple of months back, I actually posted on that that the, a lot of key indicators that were around. I actually firmly believe that, uh, that that a number of watershed moments had already happened to, to show that we are past that side now, and now we're the ones that are gaining momentum, and the seesaw is starting to come back down. Good. Good. So we're we're already there. Uh, there's no cusp to be crossed already. Like I said, the, the, the Rubicon has already been crossed. Mm. We're just not going to see the effects of it for a little while here yet. But it's unbelievable the level of awareness of otherwise what you would call slave class people, the, the citizenry, the, uh, that, that, that have to be pushed pretty far before they'll speak up. Mm. They're, they're done. They're irate. They've had enough. They're finished. They're waking up and the access to information is where it's never been before, that they can just go online and now get access to good information at the touch of a button, and there's radio stations like this everywhere. Um, So with minimal effort, you can become educated and aware, and it's on. Definitely. It's It's go time. And I think you're you're further down the road in seeing this going on, which is great. So it's great having somebody like you on to give us the feedback on how you see things. Um, we do see a lot going on over here in Ireland, but it's good to get the feedback from yourself and from um, your location in, in Canada. But, Steve, you have another question there, I believe? Um, no, it's not so much a question. Well, it, it could be a question. It's from UK Prepper. And uh, UK Prepper writes, OIM, has anyone ever looked into this? Looks like we could simply just make our own laws. And he uh, puts up a link to an article, Wikipedia. Uh, it's codification law. He says, Re- recodification can take place due to a rebellion, as in the American Articles of Confederation. Uh, secession, secession? Is that right? Secession? Revolution, secession. externally imposed restructuring. Comments, thoughts on you? Well, that's exactly what I've been telling people for two years now. You've got to remember, we have the right of self-determination. We can create our own governments. Anytime we want to. All a government is, is a, is a small group of people that come together, or a nation. A small group of people with, uh, with similar ideals and goals coming together and wanting to create a distinct group for the protection of those beliefs. And that's a government. That is a nation. That's the definition of a nation. A nation, by definition, is a non-geographically based political affiliation. So this could happen anywhere in the world. There's even a Supreme Court site here in Canada from a couple of native guys in one, in one of the provinces here up north. Four of them came together. Four people came together and formed their own new government that just governs them or anybody that comes on board with them. Mm. They got taken to court by Canada saying you can't do that. Guess who won? The four natives that created their own new nation. Brilliant. We have the right to do that. And then... Aside from the common law or the international law, right, uh, life, liberty, and property, do no harm, which are which are just uh, uh, fundamental uh, things. You cannot violate those when you when you create a nation. 
and, and you want to start passing your own new laws, you can't create a nation that doesn't recognize those kind of things, or you really shouldn't. After that, it's simply your own codification, and that applies to all your own people. And that's all they need is a simple pledge to leave one jurisdiction and enter another. That's all it takes. This is so, not only feasible, this is so simple and can be done today. Anybody can do this. We don't need to recodify their laws. Leave. Form your own new little collectives and nations and jurisdictions. Self-determine. We can all do this. That might be an idea, Steve. That, we love that, to do that, that. That sounds exactly like what, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Dean, the chap Larkin Rose, he, he speaks about the tiny dot. And uh, I mean that's that's pretty much what he's saying that you know we're we we are the majority and there's a tiny tiny dot that has control over us and we're afraid all, all, we we keep marching and protesting to get this one tiny dot to change the laws uh, to facilitate us better and he's saying pretty much what you're saying we don't have to do all that we can just turn our back on it and start start our own we we don't need that tiny dot to to control us. No, I, I have I use a different uh, a different uh, comparison for this on some of the other radio shows I've done where I tell people it's like right now what we believe is government is like a house party, and it's the only house party on the street. No one else has any house parties going on, so everybody's at that house party because it's the only one, and it sucks. It's a shit party. The food sucks. The the owner of the house is a bit of a dick. No one really wants to be there. <laughs> Nothing is good about it. But it's the only party, so we feel we have to be there. Mm. All it takes is one person to have a to have a house party of their own. Yeah, and, and, it, and it only has to be slightly better, and everyone will go there. Well, this this is what we're, we're trying to do over here. It, 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 there is a new political party out there who's trying to make a change. Now, on saying that, we do we, need we don't, we don't need new political parties. We need new government. Well, yeah, when I'm saying that, they, they don't actually class themselves as a party, more of a service, because they want to be a service to the people rather than, you know, like we do need government, and we need government to do all the administration, but not for taking our taxes and taking our freedoms away. We don't need a government to do that, we just need a government to run the administration of the roads and all that kind of stuff, it but not dictate to the people. It might be an advantage just to let Dean know. D- Dean, sorry, uh, the, the political service that uh, Alan is talking about, they're, they're, tr- they're trying to uh, introduce the direct democracy module. They're trying to introduce that in, instead of the, the, one with the, the, the current system that we have. Yeah, I'm not even a big fan of the word direct democracy, because democracy by its very nation is the will of the people, which means you have no individual liberties. But uh, that's not a big deal. Again, it's all in definition. So if you redefine democracy to, to mean what it's supposed to have mean, meant historically, there's nothing wrong with that. I was going to comment on that. Yes, government could administrate all they want if they want to. We need an administrative branch of government there to handle the accounts, to do the book work, to take care of all the details. That's what we created them for in the first place. Exactly, yeah. The problem is we let them hijack the executive branch. The executive branch is what creates the will that the administrators administrate. That's our will. That's our free will. And we gave it to them when we started voting. So they create our will now for us, and that's what the executive branch is. That's the part of the government that needs to go down. That's the part that needs to be destroyed, and we need to start individually enforcing our own will. Mm, definitely, definitely. The um, obviously, you know, we're seeing how this goes with the party, and you know, we're open to any party having a level of direct democracy and having recall but there's only one party out there at the moment who's offering that uh, that service or facility they're not saying that they have all the answers but what they're saying is that look you know if, if you're on the titanic and there's a lifeboat jump in it and you know there's a chance that you might be saved but they don't have all the answers but they're trying their best and we, we, you know, with Tweedledum and Tweedledee parties that we have here in the moment, it doesn't matter who you vote in, they just keep doing the same thing. And there's a, there's a reason for that, because Turkeys don't vote for Christmas. Okay, they're not going to change a system that benefits them. It's that simple. No. You know, one thing that most people haven't considered, and I've been talking about this for a while now, is the fact that we actually don't need politicians, per se. We actually don't need these people. Uh, what's happened now is we've created an entire group of people, a whole segment of society that exists for no other purpose but to pass more laws. We don't need new laws. We don't need more laws. We already have enough laws, 
And I mean going back to the common law, the law of the land, the golden rule, um, that kind of stuff, right? Life, liberty, property. We already know you're supposed to do no harm. We already know you're not supposed to trespass, steal, that kind of stuff. We had enough laws with the common law, which means that we don't need parliament buildings full of people debating nonsense. We don't need legislative buildings full of people debating nonsense and passing new policies. If they, But the problem is, if we said, okay, well, you guys don't need to create any new policies, just enforce the ones that exist, that, mm. that's, that's all they do. Yeah. So we have no need for them, which means the only thing we need is the enforcement branch of government. Everything else can go. Yeah. It's, it can go away, and all its and all those policies and and statutes and codes that, that they created can go with them because we already have all the laws we will ever need. We only need a branch of government that enforces them, and that is it. And if that was if we achieved that, all these problems would go away. Right, okay. Yeah, well, no, I totally agree with you. And hopefully, you know, we will get to that stage at the moment. I mean, as you say, maybe they are kind of... I'm trying to... I'm in two minds. Are they... Is this all kind of planned the way things they want it to go? Or are they really kind of scratching around and desperate with everything that's going on? How do you feel about that? I honestly believe that they weren't expecting us to wake up this quickly. They thought the fluoride and the public education system and the fear had done the trick. They underestimated the human spirit and the desire to be free and not be told what to do. Uh, and they are scrambling. And that's actually in their own uh, uh, broadcast, if you want to call it that. Uh, Hillary Clinton admitted on the record that they are losing badly the information war. We've got that, uh, Br- uh, whoever that Brzezinski guy, whoever the hell it is there, that Bilderberger guy over there last year or whatever, admitting that the that the planned new world order has been derailed. And it's been derailed because of the internet and people getting the message out and the word out and we can't be duped anymore. They've admitted to this and so now they don't know what to do. And I, maybe they didn't have a contingency plan. Uh maybe I, who knows. But now the problem is now we enter the world of speculation. What are they going to do? Are they willing to to murder half the planet to maintain control? I guarantee you that there's different factions within their own camp that they're probably arguing at this very moment over what to do about this. There's no unity among them. They're tyrants. Yeah. How could you possibly have a group of people, every single one of them wants to control the world? You think they're going to have a united group? Exactly. They, they want to kill each other just as much as they want to kill us. Exactly. Well, they're all psychopaths. I just want to make a quick announcement that... And um, we did have a problem with the the stream. It's back up and up and running now. It just dropped out for a minute. Um, sound should be back on. Sorry about that. We don't know why it went down. Um, obviously, what we're talking about might be upsetting a few people there. So the old gremlins in the system. But we are on two of the streams, which is MSI, and we're actually on United We Strike as well in the states. And I believe we're being simulcasted on two of the radio stations. So. Loads to choose from if you uh, if one of the players goes go down. But I totally agree with you, Dean. There are psychopaths in this these factions, and you can guarantee there's inner fighting between these groups. So, um, you know, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's that's what's going on now. I, I'm curious to see what develops in the Middle East with Syria, because you know, obviously, we were talking to John, and John being a mil- military man, and being um, counterintelligence and all his background military planning, he said that basically that they will um, pop in and they will take over Syria and then when they do that, then they'll jump into Iran. So I'm kind of watching what's going on there with interest just to see what I'm, happens, you know? I'm going to say I'm gonna say no. They're not going to topple Assad. Uh, the biggest development happening in the world in the last couple of weeks is the meltdown currently going on in Turkey right now, or tu- Turkey. Um, they, uh, that place is going down, uh, if you want to call it, uh, their, their own spring right now, the, 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 the Turkey spring, man, there are protests there, uh, Twitter's gone down, internet's gone down, people have taken to the streets, uh, it might be, it might be a drogan that's going down, and if Turkey collapses, uh, or even if it doesn't, if civil war starts there, which looks likely at this point, they're going to be so busy trying to maintain power in their own country, that they're going to be unable to help all these other nations attack Syria through Turkey any longer. Mm-hmm. So, number one, that just about became impossible uh, on that front. Then you've got the delivery of the S-300s to, uh, to, to Syria, which has already happened, which means any airstrikes for any no-fly zone 
is going to be a disaster. And not only that, I certainly hope the United States military tries to send in their aircraft carriers and their uh, and one of their fleets into the Mediterranean there, because those things are just walking, uh, they're floating, float, floating mass graves is what they are, to the, to the level of weaponry that Syria has. Uh, Syria is not Iraq. Syria is not um, um, any of these other little piddly countries like Afghanistan. That uh, the, the U.S. can't even win in Afghanistan. How pathetic is that? Well, you know, the S-300s were given to them by Russia, I believe. And um, I, I don't know what game Russia is playing in this. You know, I don't know whether Russia is playing the game with the um, the oligarchs and, you know, just playing the game and pretending to be on the opposite side or whether they are sincerely are trying to help Syria and saying to Israel, don't even think about it. It's in their own best interest to protect Syria because if NATO encroaches any further into that territory, um, Ru- Russia, it's game over for Russia. They're just starting to protect their own sphere of influence now. I don't think they're on nobody's side but their own. Everybody wants to think, oh, are they on the side of good or bad? Neither. They're on their own side. They're looking out for them. They don't want to be the last on the chopping block, and they know that will happen when there's nobody else left to support them. Not only that, if Syria is an ally of Russia, and they are, there's no question that they are an ally. Hmm. How many allies is Russia going to have left if Russia refuses to come to the aid and defense of their allies? Every single one of their other allies is going to go, well, why the hell am I allied with these guys? They're letting the U.S. and NATO walk over every single one of their allies. Mm. It's no benefit to be an ally of theirs anymore, which means they now lose their allies, and they're now isolated, which means it's game over them for them as well. So, no, this is a chess game, and I, I, I do believe the line has been drawn in the sand in Syria. Uh, they're not going to let another one of their allies go down, because that'll question whether or not they're able to even protect their own allies. I mean, maybe for people who, and this is my understanding of it, the so-called rebels, which is what the main, let's say, lamestream media are trying to promote, they're trying to promote the rebels as the heroes to rescue Syria. But what's really happening is the rebels are the bad guys and Syria as a country and Assad is trying to defend the country and help the people. And everybody in Syria generally are behind Assad to stop these rebels doing what they're doing. But the lamestream media are just promoting the rebels as the good guys. Yeah, the, 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 uh, our media is promoting the group that has now been busted using sarin gas the group that has been busted massacring villages and openly having a program to kill and rape uh, women in every village they go into and massacre, these are the people our media is telling us is good and wants to do good things for Syria. It's absolute insanity. And fortunately, I think people are waking up, though. The problem is you're not going to hear it on the news that people aren't believing the news anymore. But nobody is believing the news anymore, and that's why we're getting the attention we're getting now. People like us, people like you, people like Alex Jones, it gets a viewership that CNN can only dream of, because people know that this is not right. The media is not working anymore. The people are not believing the lies. Uh, pretty soon here, there's just going to be a couple of them in a room believing their own bullshit. Yeah, definitely. going to be left. Yeah, I think and the p- people need to know this, that the rebels are in Syria are not required. They, Syria don't want them there. They shouldn't be there. They're being, the, the mainstream media is trying to make them out as, you know, saviors of Syria because Assad is such a bad man. That's nothing. That's so far away from the truth at the moment. They're foreign fighters. They yeah. are foreign mercenaries hired by the United States and uh, Qatar and Saudi Arabia to go in there to destabilize Syria so once they take Syria out of the way, they're going to be able to attack Iran uh, with a better position of strength. It's nonsense. Stop believing any of the puke you hear on TV. Yeah, there is a a statement here by one of the chaps on the chat, uh, Mike Elder, and he says, if you're not careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppression, Malcolm X. Well, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know much about Syria, but I know at the end of the day, that's what's happening. The rebels are being funded and giving weapons by the Americans because the Americans want to take out Syria. And if John is right with his prediction, take out Syria and then go into Iran, then bounce into Iran. And that's going to be a completely different kettle of fish. Um, And um, so hopefully, I mean, 
I'm curious to see what's going to happen because it's all going off at the moment. As I say, the world at the moment is in a situation that it's never been before. And then we are talking, if you want to talk on a little bit different level, we know time is speeding up. There are energy changes taking place in the planet. Um, There are things going on, like, you know, people are talking about Project Wormwood. A lot of um, astronomers going down to Australia and scientists to watch the solar system coming into a solar system, into our solar system, and a few other things going on. So we are at a, at a time in history in the Earth that we've never seen before. So what's going to happen in the next couple of years? I haven't a clue. We're just kind of, you know, riding the wave at the moment, Steve, aren't we? That's, that's all we can do. I mean, when, when you see, like, the, 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 the big guns, so to speak, the governments and they're sending troops here, there and everywhere and they're doing un, unspeakable things and carrying out all these atrocities, I mean, what can we do? I know, like, we, we can see it on the mainstream. We cannot see it on the mainstream. We can hear about it. Uh, we can we can read about it on blog people's blogs and all this, but I mean, really, I mean, is I, I mean the only thing that we can really really do is is probably on a conscious level and is just probably send send love to these to these people who are being oppressed. I mean, and what what can we do? Well, we can do what we can do locally. Thank, I was just I was just going to ask that question for you guys, yeah. and uh, that that's the beauty of this divestment thing I'm talking about. We we can't. We can't and we shouldn't raise armies to fight these people. We don't need to protest. We don't need to do anything except defund the system. And again, everybody, oh, but these people have billions of dollars. What can we do against that? I can barely afford to eat next week. It's like, okay, well, here's the problem. 1% of the people, way less than 1% of the people are probably behind most of this. That's so way less than that. They're probably You could probably fit them all in a room, the people that are ultimately behind all this. Yeah. But what is what is a couple of hundred people... With, with, with several hundred million dollars compared to a hundred million people with ten dollars. We've got the same financing as them. We just, uh, all we have to do is all get together and just locally, where we live, stop buying things that generates tax revenue for them. Stop buying luxury items. Stop giving that system energy and money. And when a hundred million people around the world start pulling ten or twenty dollars a month out of that system, that's it. Or a hundred dollars a month. Just stopping your cable package, your internet, uh, sorry, your, your satellite or cable TV package is a hundred bucks a month, uh, over here. Anyways, 150 for a basic package. Just stopping that. If a hundred million people stop watching TV and cancel their cable package, that is several billion dollars. It's like 10 billion dollars you just took out of the system that they need to buy bonds. That's a lot of money just canceling your cable bill. That's all we have to do. How easy is that? Mm, definitely I think we'll have to you know start I mean we look at a lot of things and we try and I mean people these days have to cut back on a lot of things anyway because of the the cost of living going up and the value of the currency going down so myself and Steve anyway we look at everything and and try and cut down as much as we can but there's only there's only so much that we can do but I do agree that as I say tie all that in with bartering and everything else and uh, take the funds away from the government so, you know, just, just, I mean, what can they do? If you're going to barter with somebody, they can't turn around and arrest you because you're bartering. Since I don't, yep. I don't remember that being outlawed. Well, unfortunately in Ireland, I mean, the sales taxes from booze alone probably finances most of the wars in the world. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like, what can you guys do over there? Start brewing your own beer instead of paying heavily taxed beer at the pubs? I'm sure, I'm sure they did it for years over here. We call it Pochine. And uh, I think there's people still over here that know how to make it. So we can definitely say that, uh, you know, does it, there'll be no harm in that. Anyway, if people go off and uh, do their own potching. So what um, what other things have been going on with you, Dean, that you can tell us from a, you know, from the law point of view? What what can we kind of, is there any information that you can help us with to understand, like the straw man and moving away licenses and tax and all that kind of stuff? Has there, have you done any more research on that? Absolutely. In fact, I think I'm at the end of that research. There's not much more I want to pursue on that, which is why I'm getting on to real world solutions with it now and, uh, and, and a land stewardship program that I'm launching that's going to be pretty interesting, uh, from a, from a solution standpoint. But, uh, I don't think anything's going to prove it to anything further than what happened to me this last spring. I'm sure you guys were, are aware of that, uh, the arrest I had here in, in Manitoba there on February 2nd for, uh, uh, defending myself from an unlawful arrest. 
because uh, the guy tried pulling me over with uh, no plates, no driver's license, no registration, no nothing, and uh, I was attacked by the officer, and I physically defended myself and got arrested and thrown in jail for 26 days. Yeah, I, I, was this the, I think the last time we, we wanted you on, and uh, you said to us that um, you couldn't get, have Skype because in the timeshare apartments in, in Canada, courtesy of the uh, Canadian government, they uh, don't have Skype in the prison cells. Yeah, yeah, it turns out they wouldn't provide me with Skype in prison. So, uh, But the, the, the end story to all this, without getting into, into details, is after, uh, I mean, I spent 16 days in solitary confinement for my political beliefs. That, that got put in writing, by the way, I've got that. Um, after 26 days, I was charged with 11 charges, uh, assaulting a peace officer, resisting arrest, obstruction of justice, driving without a license, driving without insurance, driving uh, suspended, driving this, driving that, you name it. They came up with 11 of them. At the, on the 26th day, based on the, on the, on the, on the theories that I teach, uh, I, I, wrote, I wrote myself out of prison, and the Crown Prosecution Services had to stay prosecution on every charge against me. And I told them in court, I said, absolutely, I have no license, and I'm driving, I'm driving without a license. Congratulations, I'm guilty of the facts, I don't require one. I did this, I did that, I had no insurance, I had no license, I, absolutely, and absolutely, I grabbed that man when he tried to hold, when he tried to grab me and he punched me in the face, I grabbed him and I threw him around the parking lot and I made him look like a friggin' fool in front of a whole crowd of people. I said, I'm proud of it. I'm guilty of the facts on every single count. Well, why did they stay prosecution on every charge then? Why? Well, I don't because know. Because I'm, I'm correct. Okay. As soon as I correct, as soon as I corrected the record and I, and I, 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 and I correctly identified myself instead of who they were claiming I was, they had to stay prosecution immediately because now they were attacking the principal. There's a there's a maxim in commerce that when you attack the principal, commerce fails. Wow. Okay. These people were fucking terrified. Okay. And did, does that mean that they tried to get you out of court quite quickly then? No. Well, yeah. In fact, the, the the particular document that I sent in actually that I didn't send in. It took me like twenty something days to get it out to a friend. I hand wrote it, hand wrote it from prison. He's a commissioner of oaths, and he's one of my best friends, and he's got power of attorney for me also. He commissioner of oaths it, and then he faxed it off to, to a certain uh, branch of the uh, the government, so to speak. This was at 4 p.m. on Wednesday. By 9 a.m. on Thursday, they were already notifying the courts that they were going to be staying prosecution on every charge. There was two hearings in the morning, and by 2 p.m. I was out having a beer. Fantastic. Fantastic. So there is still law and order, and they, you better believe that when when you make it a point, uh, when you when you send notice correctly, and you know where to go from now on, and we're, I'm going to be teaching this to people. This is going to be in the videos now on the website. It's game over. They can't attack you anymore because they are in supreme shit. And when I tell you this, the last hearing that I was at, I've never seen so many sheriffs in my life in the courtroom. Even the crown prosecutor got escorted in and escorted back out by sheriff, locked doors, sheriff's outside the courtroom, and I'm already in, in wrist cuffs and ankle cuffs. Unbelievable. Closed hearing, even family was not allowed in. So there was some serious stuff that went down, and I don't think it was because they wanted to make sure I couldn't escape. Mm. There was some serious securities fraud that had gone on. And I honestly believe with all my heart that I sat down and thought about it afterwards. I think they, I think that all those sheriffs were there to arrest the Crown Prosecutor if I had given an order to do so. Wow. Because, well, again, they, they, I, I'm the principal. I made it very clear and I corrected the record at the proper place. See, everybody wants to send letters off to the Pope and they want to contact Queen Elizabeth over in England or, or other stupid things that has nothing to do with what's going on. And I know that for a fact. It's all locally. You can deal with it all locally. And all it took was one five-page document that probably could have been one page faxed to the proper office. And it ended everything like that. Well, this is it. This is the whole thing. This, this is one of the questions that we had. And you might be able to answer this. When you're dealing with something, maybe it's a, a, a speeding foreign parking ticket or something like that, how do you work at which office you have to go to? To if you're doing a notice of estoppel or you're doing an, an affidavit of truth, 
wherever you want to put in to this, how do you know which office to go to? Because if you go to the wrong office, chances are you might lose because it's the wrong office. It's simple because there is only one office that we should be dealing with. We shouldn't be interacting with government at the lower levels at all, period. That's what's getting us in trouble. There is only one place to go to, okay? Um, do I, uh, if there's a, your, your local bank, do you ever get involved in all the internal policies of your local bank and try to tell them how to do their job and go to, go to upper management hearings at your bank when you just have a bank account there and go to some of their internal banking uh, uh, um, uh, meetings and try to argue them on their own internal bank policies? Mm. No, you're just a depositor at the bank, right? Exactly, yeah. Where did this all begin? How did this all start? The legal person. Well, it's, um, hang on a minute there, Dean. Um, we let, Steve has to uh, head off. Uh, we have a, um, a family matter that Steve has to deal with, so he's okay. going to head off. So, um, you know, that's good, because I, I want to clarify that stuff more on my website and my forum anyways. I want videos uh, and stuff like that, the tutorials we're going to release to people. But uh, believe me, we're at the end of this. The legal person is based... I, I actually gave you the solution at the very beginning here. you got to remember, we own the house. Okay, so, uh, Dean, just hang on there for a minute, will you? Um, you Steve is uh, just heading off. He has a, a family issue that he has to deal with. So we'll say uh, goodbye to Steve. And um, we'll uh, see you... Uh, well, I'll talk to you during the week, okay? Right. I'll let people know how we get on. It's up there in the chat anyway, so they, they know what's going on. Yeah, okay. Uh, basically, um, Steve's um, little girl has... Um, yeah, catch you later, Steve. Steve's little girl has actually damaged her fingers there, and it might be a trip to the hospital, so he has to... Um, he's going to fly home there and take care of what needs to be done. So all the best to Steve, and I hope the little girl's okay. His little girl's okay. Absolutely. Um, but um, no, we can we can carry on. But um, cheers, everybody. Yeah, as I say, you know, family force has to has to be done there. But um, yeah, we're dealing with the banks at the moment. As as I say, the big thing about the securitization of what's going on over here in Ireland is that um, we are fighting back. There's so many people now. You know, fighting back the banks, and they're asking for their um, the uh, the agreement, the original agreement, which a lot of the banks are saying they can't find that they've lost. It was in the fire, whatever. All these excuses, um, and people are saying, "Well, I'm not paying the TV license. Why should I pay for you know that crap?" Or they're fighting, you know, speeding tickets. But the kind of there's a couple of methods which which they're using over here. One is the return to sender method. You know, the whole "Do you want a contract with me?" No, return to sender, send it back. Or the other side is what Tommy Pepperman um, uh, talks about. is actually, if they go and they, they're coming to attack you, you attack them back. You go, you know, you fight them back. Don't wait for them to come to your door. You go and attack them. There's no question that, that that's a good way to do that. But, uh, again, in, in, the, in, the land of ca- uh, in the land of commerce, standing is everything. Yeah, you have to have standing to have a claim. So if you if you don't know what your proper status is and how to and how to make a claim in the proper capacity, you have no standing, which means you can be you can and will be ignored. Yeah, isn't that doesn't that sound like what's been happening up De- until recently? Definitely. Well, there's there's a lot of people that um, will have gone into court, and I have to kind of said this to people: you really, really need to know the game if you're going to go in because yes. they, they, they will use so many tricks and turns and twists you really really need to know what, they're, okay. what, they're, what you're playing with you know here's a couple of hints then for beginners too that's why I don't want to get too complicated with some of the stuff that I did because that, that's a bit of a, a neutron bomb attack when you're, when you're going after them simple little things are you have to understand that the courts number one the courts operate on a mandate assumptions and presumptions Statutes and codes tell the court what, how they operate. And in those codes and statutes, they have to, they're required by law to assume and presume that you are uh, of, of a certain capacity until you state that or rebut it to the contrary. So they're already assuming and presuming that every claim against you is 100% legitimate by the Crown Prosecution Services or whatever you people call them over there. So that's the assumption and presumption that's being operated on. Uh, so the minute you walk in, it's assumed that you are who the crown says you are and that you have done what the crown says you have done. That's why you're not innocent until proven guilty, because the courts must operate on the, on the assumption 
that the crown is always acting in good faith. Always. Which means they're always right until proven wrong. So they flipped it in the courts. That's why you're, that's why you're guilty until proven innocent. Because it's assumed the crown can't be lying. It's impossible. But surely so, they have to prove you're guilty. If they're accusing you, they have to prove it. Uh, well, yeah, but... Uh, well, it's more of a formality once you're in the courts because it's already presumed that you are guilty. Right, because, okay. the, because the crown is in, it never lies. Okay, well. <laughs> All right, that's, yeah. see, but see the distinction there, right? Yeah. So now it's more of a burden on you to prove that you're, you're innocent, which is a flip to what we honestly, we used to believe the courts really were. Uh, and that's because of mandate, right? So you can attack things like that right away. The other problem is when you're walking into these courtrooms, if you don't specify that you're not there by general appearance, if you don't let them know you're there by special appearance to correct possible mistakes on the record or to address a few issues before you take part in what's going on, the instant that you make general appearance and answer to the name, because you've got to remember, they're looking for a certain capacity of you. Hmm. They're looking for a certain version of you, a yeah. very diminished version of you. That's who they're looking for. So the minute you go and answer to the name... You've just admitted to being the very diminished version of you. And if you make a general appearance, you've now waived all deficiencies in the claim being made by the Crown against you. So, what's, what's the... Here's a, there's a number of questions coming in regarding the, the methods that are out there. So, let's, let's look at the first one. There's a couple I'm going to throw at you. Let's look okay. at the uh, RTS method, the re return to sender method. So, they send you... A, a summons to the post and you stick on RTS return to sender I'm not contracting bye bye and you stick it back in the post what do you think of the RTS method? Um, it's ultimately it will most likely fail the problem is you're not addressing the false claim being made against your person and unfortunately you are the surety for your person right that, that's your property so okay. you're basically allowing somebody to trespass on your property unchecked and okay. they're just going to keep trespassing at that point. That's almost like consent to keep coming after your legal person. Your legal person is your property. It's yours, and it's yours to defend. So what would be your process if a summons was sent to you in the post? Um, um, I like, uh, we used to do refused for cause, but they're ignoring that now because there is always no cause of action when they send these tickets. Um False claim, there's, there's, geez, I don't know, it depends on what route people want to take. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what ex what acceptance is when you're accepting a charge. And this this comes back to the, uh, like, the honor system, the feudal system, if you want to call it this, where, uh, you know, two uh, two knights used to be in a room, and one of them would throw his gauntlet down on the floor and challenge the other the other knight, right? Okay, yep. Um, do you, to, in order to defend yourself and your reputation, would you not accept the challenge? Well, that's what normally happened, didn't it? That that's what acceptance is. I accept your challenge. If you decide you're going to start running away, no, I, I don't. I don't want to take this person's. I'm not going to. I'm not going to accept this person's false claim. Hmm. You and you run away. Yeah. See, the, the way I and kind of lost. Yeah, the way I kind of described. You know, as I say, everybody's comfortable in their own way and what they're happy to deal with. And I'm not knocking any method. It's whatever works for 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 everybody. But yes. I see the RTS method as the, you have the bully in the playground, and the RTS method is the bully, bu the bully comes up to you, and you kind of walk away from him. And he'll either go off and annoy somebody else, or he'll carry on coming up to you, and you keep walking away from him. The other mm. way would be, Tammy's way would be to say, you, you, you work out what needs to be done to, defend, to, to beat the bully, and then you go up to the bully, and then sort him out, so he doesn't do it again. Yeah, um, and again, though, the problem is, though, that you're still leaving your legal person out there to be to be plundered at that point, legal plunder. All they have to do is make a claim and have that claim go unrebutted, mm. and they can then go ahead and legally plunder your legal person. And they'll start putting liens on houses, everything that's owned in the name of the legal person. They'll mm. start attacking, leaning, you name it, uh, they'll come after you. They will. Okay. Try that first to see if it goes away. Return to sender, see if it goes away. And then it's like varying degrees of response, if you want to call it that. If it goes away, great. If it doesn't, when they come back a second or a third time, you're going to have to up the ante probably. You're going to have to say, okay, I accept your challenge. Produce your claim. Okay. Yeah, Tommy did say produce, that. Produce your equitable claim against me or my person. 
Right, we have a, a question come in there. Dean, what is the quickest and surest way to correct st- status with the government outside of Viversy in court? Uh, well, I, I don't know what that is, but uh, the, the best way to correct status immediately with the government is residency. Like it says here, you, uh, does it involve a written claim too? I understand that if one is dealing with CRA, for example, you should write them, but who would be at the top? Hmm. Uh, well, it would be the commissioner. Hmm. the top guy. Uh, what people have to understand also is uh, um, addressing the social insurance number problem or, or whatever. Uh, what, what's your version over there of the social insurance number, the social security number? Yeah, we have a PPS, a PPS number, which is our social security number. Yeah. In that document, you claim to be a resident of their political jurisdiction. Hmm. Well, we're, the, the thing is, we're given the PPS number when we're young. Children okay. are, you know, like my son is only 12, and yet he has one. So as soon as the the kids are born, I suppose, to a certain extent, they're assigned the number straight away. Well, they, they started that over here as well, but the difference is, is actually you, it's a box you check off on the, uh, on the birth forms. And that, that basically, they'll send you the SIN, right, when the kid is born now. But historically speaking, you used to have to, to fill an application form, and that form had a box in there that you would check off because they, they make us believe that we're a resident, right? Yep. And a re- if you look up in Black's Law Dictionary, and people had trouble finding it for the longest time, uh, because apparently they, they, they didn't read uh, to the bottom of the definition, um, I told people for a long time now, it's the word resident that's the problem, because a resident makes you an agent or an officer of that foreign jurisdiction. And the minute you become an agent or an officer of a foreign jurisdiction, you're bound by the policies of that foreign jurisdiction. You're stripped of your human rights. It's a human rights filter. Because an officer of a corporation cannot have human rights. Because to grant human rights to an officer of a, for- of a corporation would be to grant human rights to the corporation itself. Mm. To get you to admit to being a resident agent is actually what it is. You're a resident agent of that corporation. You reside within that political jurisdiction, that corporation, and that's what traps you. And then they don't they don't discuss the little details when you get to court, like the fact that you've actually never performed any function of that of that organization. You've never been paid. It was not voluntary. The court doesn't see that stuff because nobody brings it up. So it's just assumed that you must be a paid, consensual agent of that organization. You violated violated policy while you're on duty. That is another uh, presumption and assumption that they operate on as law. It's operation of law that everything was just exactly the way the Crown Prosecutor said it was. They do that quite a lot. I have another question for you, Dean. Um, When Dean says the legal person is your property, is there a distinction of equitable and legal title? And if so, do we own both titles? Um, Well, legal title is held by the trustee. We own the equitable title. Um, If we we possess both equitable and legal title to to a thing, then there is no trust anymore. The trust collapses because we, we have every element of that thing now. So, no, we never get legal title to the person back. We granted it to them. They're the tenant of it. They're renting the legal title to our person. We own all equity, right? So what that means is uh, I, I have a, a usual explanation I use for this, and over here I use Tim Hortons because there's a Tim Hortons on every street corner. They're about to open a Tim Hortons in everyone's living room in Canada. And who are they? Uh, Who's Tim Hortons? We don't know. Tim Hortons is a, is, a, is a very popular coffee shop now. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, so you, so you could use the, the, the term McDonald's. Let's, just, let's use McDonald's because I know you guys have those over there. Yeah. Uh, pretend you inherited a restaurant that your parents left you. It was a birthright. Your parents left you a restaurant. And it's, uh, it's called Your Name uh, 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 Food or whatever. It's just the restaurants in your name, just the family name, because there still is family named restaurants around, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, but your restaurant kind of sucks. You don't really want to run it. The food isn't very good. The business is not really there either. It's not very profitable, um, and you just want other people to manage the restaurant for you. Now, uh, is the restaurant you... Well, no, it's just a, it's just an entity, isn't it? It's, it's just, just a business. It's just an entity that you own. It's your restaurant. So the restaurant's not you. And you're not the restaurant. It's something you own. It's a part of you. It's an extension of you because you own all the equity in it. And you run the restaurant. You administrate it. You just inherited it. You don't want it. So you call up McDonald's. You say, hey, guys, 
you know what? It seems like you guys do better business, and you're really good at running restaurants. You got like all these policies, and you know, you guys, your management teams are all well trained. And as soon as you put a McDonald's sign on a restaurant, man, it's packed, it's busy, it's making money. I want to grant you my restaurant, and you guys can turn it into a McDonald's, and you can operate it, and pay yourselves your management fees for running it. But I'm going to own all the shares in it, and I just want you to send me my check every month. Mm. That's all that happens when we grant this legal person to them. So now they've kind of set up shop, and they're using the name of the legal person. But we own it. And do you, do you have an idea on what the figure would be? Poor, you know the way we, we have... Um, they say that when we're born, we, are, uh, we have a figure that's on us. And yet the government used this money. You know, we're in, put in bondage yes. and we're registered. And does, is there a sum of money that you have worked out or do you know about that what our value is? What makes sense to me, and, and this is the problem people don't understand, it, just because they created, for instance, say, uh, uh, let's say they create $10 million inside their system based on, based on your deposit of the, of the live birth record, and the creation of the legal person. Okay, they create $10 million. Um, that's not $10 million is owed to you. That's just how much monopoly money they created inside their system. Mm. What is mm. owed to you is the return on investment based on what they've done with all of that. Okay? Uh, no different than a bank, uh, than, than a bank mortgage. They're creating all this, this, this money, uh, that, to be used in their system, but you can't just go and ask for that money. Number one, that, you didn't create that money. They created it based on your investment. That's arm's length from you. What you are owed is the return on investment, uh, which means that, um, they can't profit off that. All they can do is they can, uh, administrate and they can manage the resources and they can do what they're supposed to do to pay themselves their wages, to pay for costs of operating everything. But after that, everything is due back to you because you're the principal. You you get the return on investment, mm. okay? No different than if I owned, a, 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 again, if I owned a coffee shop or a restaurant and I hired managers to manage it, and the managers paid all the expenses, um, the managers ran the restaurant, paid the employees, uh, hi, uh, uh, bought all the, 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 the goods and the food necessary for the restaurant, did all the advertising, they run the entire thing, and then they pay themselves their administrative fee. Where do all the profits go? Mm. They have to go to you because you own all equity in that restaurant. Mm. That okay. is what the legal person is. Okay, well we have a follow-up question from one that we uh, I read out earlier. So this person just wants to say, so to be clear, um, I know we're kind of jumping around, but the questions are coming in. And my right hand, my wingman is gone, uh, obviously, so um, I'm going from one computer to another. A written letter to the commissioner correcting status, uh, status as a resident to non-resident via registered mail. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. That would address the, uh, the income tax number problem. It doesn't address the other issue. You've got to remember... Uh, these are all different capacities. So, yeah, if you wanted to address the income tax issue, that would be one way to, to do it. Absolutely would be notice by registered mail, and I would get it notarized as well because then they have to recognize it in their system if it's no notarized. Otherwise, they can choose to ignore it, or even a commissioner of oath. That's fine. And let them know that that is a mistake. It's always been a mistake, so it's a mistake, nunk pro tunk, right back to the beginning. Okay. Right? Yeah. And all the time in between. And you're correcting that now, and let them know that. Uh, that and, and you don't even have to do that when you. When it's, this is the thing, people. When you start to get a better grasp of what's going on here, you got to remember the taxpayer is just one possible identity that you now possess. Just mm. because I possess something doesn't mean I ever use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as long as you let them know, hey, look, there's been a bit of a mistake here. Although I possess the ability to act in that capacity now. I never have. I've never used that capacity. I've never operated in that capacity. Mm. I've never been paid to perform a function of government. Mm. It's, a, it's something I've never used. So I possess it just like a tool. It's like a hammer in my, in my garage hanging on the wall that I never used. I own it. It's there. I can use it, but I never have. And until I do use it and I operate under that capacity, I can never be held liable for the rules and regulations that apply to that capacity. 
Mm. As soon as you start, as soon as you start understanding those concepts and you use them daily in your life, this shit all falls away. They can't bullshit you anymore. It's over. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that's what's happening big time. I got a question here, and um, more really got to do with uh, air jurisdiction here. But it says um, the question: How does one get offspring, children, back from the police with the guardie over here? Uh, who have abducted them and gave them to the HSC, which is like social services. Yeah. So, well, so how do you go about that? Again, the government operates on the uh, uh, by mandate, by law. They operate on the presumption that you are not the actual guardians or the parents of that child, or they redefine it to be something else. But either way, you're just another government employee. That's when it was you, in possession you, of the children until they came and took it and said, "No, you're not doing a good enough job." So we're going to come and do it. Is that when you when register your children? Um, well, because it obviously does it. I know. Um, I would say th- that again. People have to remember, um, p- registration conveys no interest in property. You're just registering something. That's it. So it's now recognized as be- within a certain system. I think the problem comes from that after you register them, um, other start other things come into play because. Uh, because of, of your previous dealings with the government, they only see you as, as one of their corporate persons anyways. And in all the paperwork, um, Garda, Garda's making it look like on the face, in their system, in their paperwork system, it looks like they only have legal persons in custody instead of real, live, flesh and blood children. Mm. See, they only have possession of the title to the legal person that was created when you registered. But now they've acted, uh, th- th- I think that, that's an action in REM, and now they've made an action in persona. They've actually gone and taken the real property instead of the legal title. And that's what you have to address. Hey, what the fuck? You guys only have permission to use the legal title of the person that was created. What do you think you're doing coming and taking the real flesh and blood children from my, from, from my guardianship? Hmm. Cause I, I, that, you have to start making that distinction in paperwork, in writing, proper claims, and send it to them, let them know, man, you guys are going down for kidnapping. I'm coming after you because you came after the real flesh and blood children. You stole the principle of that legal person that's in my care. Okay. Now I've been damaged. If you want to get into biblical law, um, you can start coming at this from the from the, from the standpoint also that Obviously, God had intended that child to be raised by you because it was gifted to you. It was granted to you, as evidenced by the fact your wife gave birth to it. Mm. If, the, if God wanted the government to have your kid, it would have appeared, it would have manifested in a government office. <laughs> but yeah. it didn't. It came into this world through us, which means the intent is that we be in possession of that child. I don't care what you think, which means you're now violating the will of God. Hmm. I, I did watch a video somewhere down the line where I think I don't know whether it was Bob Menard or somebody was saying it but they went and they took children away from the parents or one child away and when they realised that that child wasn't registered they actually gave the child back because I don't I don't think it, it's not that it wasn't registered I remember that story and I think it had to do with, uh, with another reason but either way that, yeah, that's entirely possible because that they don't because they didn't even possess the legal title for that child. They couldn't even make the case. They they couldn't even make it believable. They had the right to go and take the actual child itself. Well, I, if the, yeah, Crown Copyright on the chat said it was John Harris that said that. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, remember, keep this in mind also. When you get deeper into the game, you're going to realize that again. We've already established the government's a middleman, right? That's right. Yeah. The government is only acting on your behalf. When they come and they take your child, they claim to be operating on your behalf. But your the you that they're talking about is the you in a different capacity, the principal, the grantor. Hmm. But that you're gone. They've never heard from you. So to protect your asset, your child, they've gone and seized it to to, to keep it safe for you because they don't the, the you that they see is the government employee. Hmm. They don't acknowledge you as the principal, the grantor, and that has to be corrected. That's another record that needs to be corrected. You're, you're MIA. You've gone away on a, on a voyage. You've been gone seven years, and as far as they know, you're dead. So they're going to handle your affairs until you get back. They're going to look after your children. They're going to look after your house. They're going to do everything for you until you come back. And they're going to kick out the renter. 
Because you're only viewed as a renter when you're living in your house, by the way. Wow. Tell me something, Dane. Do you feel that the justice system is works if you know how to deal with it? Absolutely. So you, do you feel that judges are there really and they will help you once you know what, you, what you're doing? The problem is a lot of these common law defenses that I'm talking about, they can't even see them in statutory court. They don't exist because they're extra statutory. So when it's you something, it's something they can't even see. They can't see your defense when you say, "Well, no, I, I, I'm I'm not who they claim I am. I'm a common law man. I have the right to do that." That doesn't exist in that jurisdiction. Okay, so, so what about they pe- want to help you, but you're in the wrong courtroom. Right, but this this is the thing exactly. You know, which courtroom are you in? And also, one of the things that we're obviously told um, is to when you stand up in court, if they call your name, you say objection. And then you say to the judge, is this a civil or criminal matter? I mean, does that work for you? Would they, do you think that would work? Well, that would be an interesting, uh, that would be an interesting thing to get into, but you, uh, you, you shouldn't be objecting already just because they call the name. What you could do is you say, uh, say, uh, I, 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 I believe I might be here regarding that matter. And uh, well, who are you? Say, well, that defend, that depends. Could somebody please clarify? exactly uh, what the name is that they just called. Are you calling a legal person? Are you calling an agent or officer of Her Majesty? Or are you calling a common law man? Could you please clarify who it is and what it is you're calling and for what purpose? Well, Mm. they're going to freak out when you do that. (laughs) You just need clarity. Mm. And you're you're asking a question, which is obviously not in contempt. Uh, of course it isn't. That's just a question. Could you please clarify exactly who and what it is you're looking for? Because I received this paperwork, but uh, but, but I've, I I've, I might have received it in error. I'm not sure because I'm not a, I'm not a legal person. I, I I'm not here to represent one. I'm not an agent or officer of Her Majesty. Um, I think somebody may have made a false claim against me and, and misidentified me. Well, now there's a now there's a dispute with regards to identity. That court cannot proceed until identi- until identity has been established. And if you start to question what it is exactly they're looking for, they'd have to explain who they want there to make sure that they've identified the correct party. The whole thing falls apart just right there. Yeah, and I mean, the judge could just throw that out of court, you know. Who knows, but one of the tactics they used recently uh, that, they've, that they'd like to fall back on now is they just say, well, if you're not who we're looking for, we're just going to issue a warrant for their arrest. And then they tried that one on me, and I just said, well, if I'm not who you're looking for, then I guess I don't care now, do I? Right, and what happened? Well, they'll just come and they'll, they'll arrest you a year down the road. They'll pull you over in traffic stop. Oh, there's a warrant out for you. Right? Yeah. We've, I've, I've heard recently of people in Canada being arrested for failure to appear in the courtroom. Hmm. When they were there on the matter, because you refused to appear in the capacity that they summoned you therein. Yeah. That's what the that's why and that's how you can be arrested for failure to appear when you're standing right there. Mm. They want you to appear in a limited and diminished capacity. And this is where you can really stymie them and say, Hey look, I'd be more than happy to appear in the capacity that you people want me here in, but here's my terms and conditions. I'm not going to do it for free. And I need a liability waiver from prosecution under statutes because I don't consent to being regulated by statutes. If you want me to be here, which which means now you're working. Mm. This is now work. They're now employing you. Hey, I got no problem uh, participating, but I need to be paid. I need to be paid up front. Here's how much I want to be paid. And I need a liability waiver because I don't know your statutes, I don't want to know your statutes, and I don't care about your statutes, and I don't consent to be regulated uh, by them in this proceeding or anywhere else at any time for any reason. Very good. So as long as you're okay with that, I'll participate. If you're not okay with that, uh, and you're going to force me to appear in a limited and diminished capacity uh, 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 without my consent, then that's slavery. That is involuntary servitude, and that means that you are trying to enslave me, and that's a violation of my rights. So go ahead. In fact, I I hope that you issue a warrant for my arrest for failure to 
operate in a capacity, certain capacity for free. That's what a warrant for your arrest is when you, when you refuse to appear in one of their capacities. They're issuing a warrant for you, especially once you say, look, pay me, pay me in advance and give me a liability waiver or I do not want to participate. If they refuse to do all that and they issue a warrant for your arrest, they are guilty of involuntary servitude. They are now forcing you to do something for free against your will. That's how you get them. Fantastic. Well, then we've reached that time of the evening. And uh, fantastic information. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Um, brilliant as usual. Brilliant information. Now, you know, normally I'll pass over to Steve at this time, but as we know, Steve had to go and run out there. But give us all the, uh, the links, your website, or any information that you want to give to our yeah. listeners so they can pop okay. over and, and check this information out. Yeah, please do. We're, getting, we're just getting around to the finally the, the information we wanted to get on the website now. We finally got our little production studio set up. We're going to be doing our own uh, interviews. Uh, which then are going to like, go through production and uh, videos as well, videos and audio. It's all going to be available, some of it publicly, and most of it, the content is going to be available on the website, uh, which people have to become a member, and we're looking for membership uh, fees, donations. And here's the reason why. We, uh, we've got a project we're trying to fund, which we want to be one of the major solutions to what's going on on the planet right now. It's a land stewardship program that I'm kind of going to be launching which has to do, it's going to be working in conjunction with the divestment plan. So uh, we're, we're going to be looking, we want people to join up and to get involved here, learn their rights, and more, more so than ever, we also want people to get involved in the land stewardship program and the divest, divestment program we got going on. I don't want people protesting. I don't want people out violently confronting the government. In fact, I suggest people keep their driver's licenses and keep their insurance for now. Try to fight the tax man. But for the most part, try to vote with your dollar now and just defund the system in the best way you can, which leaves you open to the least amount of risk, which could harm your family if you go to jail. And we'll start to take these guys down anyways. Um, the website is deanclifford.info. So it's deanclifford.info. Brilliant. And we're just really starting to get ramped up right now. And, uh, and a lot of people, I know, I know people out there want this, uh, want this information for free. And we, and believe me, I just gave you all the information for free. It's not like we're charging people, uh, for the information on the website. The reason we want them involved, again, is my concept on this is, is I don't want ten people with a million dollars behind my back. Mm. I want a million people with ten dollars behind my back. Yeah. Because with that kind of financing, we can buy back this planet if we have to. Hmm. Well, that makes sense, and I think we'd like to do the same thing. Okay, Dean, just stay with us there for a minute, and we'll be back after this musical break. Okay, that was a bit of uh, Beastie Boys, you got to fight for the right. Now, I'd just like to say, before we uh, finish up, um, if Steve, uh, I don't know whether Steve be listening, but his little girl had an accent with her fingers there, so he had to rush off and... Um, and sort that out. So all the best to Steve. I hope the hope little girl's okay. Hope it's not too serious. I just said um, thanks to Dean. We're going to get a banner ad from Dean, and we're going to get to open the site, and we're going to be advertising a few things that Dean's doing. Great information there. So before we uh, wind up things here, just uh, again a reminder that we have the OAM seminar in Kells. Um, in County Meath in the Hedford Arms on the 17th of June, 8pm to 10pm, we're talking about the dangers of wireless technology. I don't think we'll um, have time to talk about any fluoride, but, you know, if you, let me see, we might have a few minutes to talk about it. It depends on the time. It depends. But we really want to talk about the wireless stuff. And if things go well with the seminar, then obviously what we're going to do is we're going to have more seminars. That's the plan of attack. And we just need your help. And we need a little bit of funding. As Dean said, if you have 100,000 people giving 1 euro or 2 euro, it's much better than having 10 people just giving that money because you have more support. And what we're trying to do is educate as much as we can. But we can only do it with your help. And as uh, we know that the country is in a bit of a state and money is very tight with everybody. But... As I say, even one or two, three euros, it makes a big difference. It does help towards helping us fund what we need to fund. And we'd love to be able to do more seminars. So, as I say, with your support, hopefully we can do that. 
Again, usually, you know, during the week, you know, if you have any links or you come across anything of interest, please let us know. We are open your mind, so we open our mind to a lot of things. I'm trying to find more, informa- for more information on Project Wormwood at the moment. There seems to be information on the, on the internet, on YouTube, but they tend to be three, four, five months our date, and I'm just trying to find out more information on that. So if you have any links regarding Project Wormwood, just out of interest, I'd like to, um, if, they, if you come across it, let me know, give us a shout. But I'll tell you what we'll do, for now we're going to finish up a little bit early, just a few minutes early, and we're going to hand over to MSI. I'm not too sure who's on MSI at 9 o'clock, but whatever the show is, I'm sure it's going to be great information. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Loads of people tuning in. Loads of questions. If we didn't get to your question, we apologise for that. But um, down at um, Walton Mountain here on OIM, we have the system set up for two people. And unfortunately, as I say, Steve had to uh, head off there. So I was trying to um, have hands like an octopus trying to do everything here. But I think it went uh, quite well. We've got... um, as I say, you know, we're going to ask Dean to come on again in the next few months because I think there's a lot more questions there that we're going to have with Dean and a lot of things going on. So Dean said that he's more than happy to come on the show and we'll talk a bit more. But for the time being, we'd just like to say uh, good night for myself, Alan James, and good night to Steve. Hopefully everything's okay. I'm sure we'll find out exactly what's going on later on. We'll get a text off and let them know when. That, you know, we'll find out what's going on anyway. But uh, take care, have a safe week, take it easy, and we'll see you again. By the way, next week we have Ashleen Fitzgibbon, which is the girl against fluoride. We're going to have Ashleen on talking about fluoride, her campaign, what's been going on, and what the news update is on the fluoride campaign. So stay tuned, catch you next week, take care, we'll see you later. Bye bye.